this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> so what's up guys? Karibuni sana. Thank you for clicking the link and finding yourself here. I realize that uh, you know I have done so many podcasts and I've done you know videos a few couple of videos uh, before that I, but I've never really introduced myself like officially like done a really good self introduction. So here it goes. <laughs> My name is Emily, but I'm proudly, proudly known as Wakeji Kamore. I am a daughter uh, to two amazing late parents uh, that went to be with the Lord. I am a niece. I am an auntie. I am a sister. I am a friend. I am a grandma to two little children that are now going to be four. I feel like that number is growing like rapidly. <laughs> They're going to be four. Uh, so yeah, and I'm... I'm a student of the word. I go to a, the school of the Bible. I am also a business lady. I run furnished apartments. I'm a graphic designer. I'm an interior designer. I am a pastor in one of um, one of the best initiatives called Collective Worship. I'm one of the pastors there. And I'm also a, a mother to a cat. I think you can see the cat like right over there. It's a very sassy cat. His name is Mixi. <laughs> so that's all about me. But most importantly, and most importantly, is that I am a believer in God, in the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I am a believer of the finished works of the cross. I love God with everything that I have. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's all about me. I guess that's a little bit more about me for people who are listening to me for the very first time, watching me for the very first time. That's me. So anyway, about a year and a half ago, I started the podcast by the name Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. Uh, it's been it's been fun. It's actually been a fun experience. And the reason why I started it is because I wanted to be able to share uh, some of the things that I'm learning in my daily in my daily life, like in a week. What are the things that I have learned? Uh, what are the things that God has placed in my heart? Um, and also be able to share God's word in the most simplest form possible. So it has been a journey that has been full of fun. I have in this space, in the space of doing the podcast, I have learned and I have been able to meet people that I you know I didn't know before. I have been called. My phone just said, I just wanted to hear from you. Uh, what you thought about this? Uh, could you encourage me? Um, you know, in my walk of faith. And in return, I have been encouraged. Uh, people have called me to check up on me, especially days when I didn't really record. Uh, people have called me uh, to just find out how I'm doing. People have called me to encourage me. People have, have called me to give me feedback. And it has been really a beautiful space. Uh, and a special, special thank you. Sorry, I'm looking at my laptop because I don't pretend to have it all in my head. <laughs> I don't. So a special thank you to all the listeners that I've had in that one and a half years. Thank you so much to everybody who has been patient with me as I have been trying to figure it out. Guys, I have moved you guys from, from you know, like the Anchor <laughs> podcast. I have gone to YouTube videos. I have gone to YouTube audios. I have come back to, I don't know, like doing like normal audios like on my phone. And now we are here <laughs> on YouTube videos again. Like, guys... You guys are like the superstars for being patient with me, for being, you know, for just following me. Like just being, you know what, we want to listen to this girl so as she figures herself out, we're just going to follow her in whatever space that she decides to speak. So it's been, it's been amazing and I really, really, truly thank you for it. So the journey of podcasting has been fun because I get to spend time with myself. Uh, to figure out what it is that I have learned in that week. I get time to to spend with God and find out what it is that you're teaching me in this week. What is it that I can share? What, um, you know, what daily thing that has happened to me that I can actually share with people. So, and then also it has been a beautiful journey because I've gotten to experience and to see God use my little acts of obedience and make them impactful in people's lives like i've seen I've, I've seen that god can actually take just me speaking for like 10 minutes and use it to encourage someone's life and use it to do something great you know with people's lives so that has been a very interesting journey so one of my greatest desires are you know right there with being wealthy and traveling the world <laughs> one of my greatest desires is to 
live a life that shows that God is in it. To live a life that is is um is clear that God is actually in my life. That I love God. And my other desire is to also make God known in the most simplest form possible. Um, if I can be able to share God's word in the most simplest form possible so that people can understand it, people can relate with it, um, it can be impactful in people's lives so that people can actually take it and apply it. Um, that's one of my greatest, greatest desires. So moving forward, the podcast continues. Yay! Podcast will continue. The podcast continues. Um, and just to add a little bit more, I've been feeling God leading me into sharing a little bit more of the word, um, even as I do the podcast. So I'm trying to figure out how to do the podcast separately and to do the this video separately, but God will lead us. But the most important thing to just notice is that the podcast will continue and then the vi these videos also will continue. And uh, I just wanted to be able to to just be able to share a little bit more of the word. It can either be, we'll be going through like a certain book of the Bible for a certain period of time, or it could be whatever God leads us to share, as long as it comes from the word of God. It could be, we're talking about a specific topic and we just look at that specific topic in God's perspective and what the word says about it. So it can be really anything, but the thing is that we are going to share a little bit more of the word of God. I promise to keep it sweet. I promise to keep it short. I promise to keep it, I don't know, uh, simple so people can be able to understand it. Actually, you can trust that I'm not a theologian. <laughs> so you can trust that I'm not going to use big words, thighs and thousands and whatever. I really like King James, but imagine I read it. Actually, my Bible is King James. And then I read it in other versions. So say, you miss your name, like, can we just break it down so that I'm able to understand it, understand what exactly the word is saying. So I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God to help me do that. I'm trusting God to help me share the word in the most simplest form possible. So carry Boni Sana to this journey. And it's, it's going to be amazing. Let's just trust God that it's going to be amazing. So today, or at least for the next couple of videos, we will look into a book that is not very common. As a matter of fact, as, pastoral as i am <laughs> as pastorly as i am as a student of the word that i am i didn't know that this book actually existed in the bible by the way we see judge but i didn't know that this book existed in the bible i've heard the story of jonah like since since i hit uh, sunday school i've heard the story of jonah being told of how he was sent by god how he ran away how he ended up in a fish's stomach, how he was swallowed by the fish and akatapikwa pahali. Like, I've had that story. But nobody, in all those people who have told me that story since I was a child, nobody said this story is found in the book of Jonah. Me, I've always thought that that story is like a small story that is in the New Testament. I can't go, like, Miss judge, like, me, Miss Pana, your kitab in exist until very very recent <laughs> I want to, like it's this year this year recent <laughs> but I'm, I'm here even wondering when i was an intern at mavuno we did like the one year bible i don't think i got to jonah i don't think i finished it so i didn't know that there was a book called jonah. okay please pastor frank don't fire me from the team of pastors at collective worship <laughs> Just know that one of your pastors didn't know there was a book called Jonah. But you know what? Jonah is 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 a book. I know you're wondering, why are we starting with the book of Jonah? Why can't we just start with Genesis or Matthew or, you know, it wants a place, place at least. But let me, the reason why I'm starting with the book of Jonah is because it speaks to me. And it speaks to me regarding these videos. I have run away from doing these videos. I have kicked and run and decide yani i have i have run away from doing these videos so that is why the book of jonah is very very personal to me right now in this season so the book of jonah is one of the books in the old testament yeah now i can tell you that because now i know <laughs> it tells of, of a hebrew prophet named jonah who was the son of a guy called amitai eh? is it Amit amitai who was sent by god uh, to give, I mean, God gave him a prophecy and he was sent by God to go to Nineveh and tell them uh, what the what God had told him to do and but then he decided, no, me, I'm going to try and escape this divine mission. Yeah. 
it sounds like a, a good movie it sounds like it would make like a really good movie so anyway let's get to it uh, so today we're going to be looking at John, Jonah chapter 1 and in Jonah chapter 1 God sends Jonah to Nineveh to go and tell the people in Nineveh you guys God has seen the things you're doing they're not nice things and you need to stop doing them or God is going to destroy this place in verse in verse 3 in one of my favorite versions Bible version is called easy to read version it says that Jonah tried 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 to run away from God I mean that can already tell you that he wasn't very successful in running away from God so he gets on a boat uh, going to like a completely different place the place was called Tash Tashish Tashish I like that name it sounds very cool he was going to a different location and then finds a place in the boat where he can sleep like in a corner first I'm like what's up with people sleeping in the boat even Jesus slept in a boat me I can't sleep in a moving vessel that is on water i can sleep on the plane i can sleep on the matatu i can't even sleep like in a matatu from town to where i live but i can't sleep in a boat something that is on water is a no no me i'm staying away pet please i'm just like counting minutes until we get to land so anyway he finds a, a special place like a really nice place where he can close up and sleep uh and as he's sleeping god sends this big storm <laughs> sends this big storm and the other guys on the boat start to throw off cargo off the boat so the boat can become lighter so that it doesn't capsize so they throw things out this reminds me of a time when we went hiking first me and hiking opposite direction so this specific time i was in a program i was a facilitator of that program so there's no way i couldn't say i'm, I'm not hiking because i'm trying to explain it to encourage kids to hike and then I was hiking with like a bottle of water. It was like about, I don't know, like a one liter of bottle of water. But to me, it was like a lot. So at some point, I was just like, this water is too heavy. This water, this water bottle, all of it, threw it away. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? It's just extra weight. Who needs water anyway? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'll just borrow water from other people. And if they don't give me, I don't need, I don't need to carry weight. So anyway, that reminds me of that experience where I threw away my water bottle and water because I felt like it was extra weight. So that, that's what the guys were doing. They were throwing away stuff from the from the boat and throwing it out so that the boat does not capsize. So that didn't work. They threw and then also, it, I mean, the storm still continued and that was not helping. And so it got to a place where people started to actually pray to their own gods. Like everybody started praying to their god, god with a small g. And still the storm did not become any less. It actually grew stronger and stronger. So all this time, Jonah is sleeping somewhere in the boat. Like he's just cozy sleeping. Uh, so yeah, all this time, uh, Jonah is, is sleeping in, in the boat. He's just uh, like, you know, having... A sleeping moment and it, I mean the guys come to him and ask him hey dude you, you are sleeping here there's a storm what is it that you did to God because at some point when he was entering the boat Jonah had told these guys that he was running away from God not a very smart guy this Jonah guy by the way I don't think he's very I have issues with Jonah <laughs> and by the time we get to chapter 4 you will see why I have issues with Jonah but anyway Jonah was not a very smart guy first who runs away from God not very smart and then you go and tell people that you're running away from god not very smart so they go to him and they ask him so you what is this that you did because eh, this your god seems like he's very very upset with you so jonah in in all his wisdom <laughs> in all his wisdom he decides uh so um i am the reason i know that i have offended god and i am the reason that this storm is here so you guys do this Pick me up and throw me off to the sea. So me, I'm like, hey, 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 stop there. First, this guy, I think he's suicidal. Like, who does that? <laughs> me, if it was me, let me just be honest. First, there's no way I'm dying by water. Like, me, Mr. Kufiti Shukifo Chamaji, it's not happening. If it was me, if it were me, I would have said, you know what? I, I know that I have offended God. He has sent me. 
and I have decided to not go and do what it is that he has sent me to do. So I am going to just stand here and repent and tell God, I'm sorry that you sent me and I didn't go and do what it is that you sent me to do. So he bought, when it lands at Tashish, I'm going to get into the next boat and go to Nineveh and tell those guys what you have asked me to tell them. But instead of doing that, this guy decides, ah, uh, Mimi, by the way, munitupe tungo kwa, kwa maji, like just throw me off into the, into the water. So let me tell you, from my Sunday school days, I know the people that told me this story. I always thought that the guys got so upset and decided to throw Jonah off the water. Nobody told me, nobody, nobody. By the way, Sunday school teachers, can you just tell the story as it is? Don't make up your own story. Nobody told me that Jonah actually volunteered himself to be thrown into the water. Nobody told me that. Like the guys actually tried to do everything else so they don't have to throw him into the water. They did it as a last resort. But Jonah had volunteered himself to be thrown into the water. So this guy is sent by God. He decides to disobey. God brings a storm. He knows he's the reason why the storm has been thrown. But instead of obeying God, he's so bent on disobeying God that he decides he wants to rather die. Like you guys, brother, throw me into the sea than me actually doing what God has called me to do. That is just crazy. Cray, cray, crazy. <laughs> so the thing is, I took some time to think about some of the things that God has asked us to do uh, and the things that we have found difficult to do or we've chosen to run away from. It could be something as simple as, you know, give that uh, child needs money, give, be, give that family that is struggling some money or tithe. Or it could be something as huge as leave your employment and start your own business or you leave your employment and go and be a missionary or go be an intern in a church or something like that. I struggled with finding something specific or a divine mission that God has asked me to do and I have run away from, but I was reminded of, as, of so much that God has said in his word that I had not done. I think the thing is, as, as recent as, the, of, as yesterday, God reminded me how his word says that we shouldn't abandon fellowshipping together as students, as, that is, students. What's that? As believers, as we shouldn't abandon, abandon fellowship, fellowshipping together as believers. And I'm a part of a life group, part of a fellowship that meets every Sunday evening, now on Zoom or like online call, but we used to meet physically before COVID. But I haven't attended. I have just decided, imagine, I'm not going to attend this thing. And it's not because of any valid reason that I have decided to not attend. I've just decided I'm not going to attend it. And, <laughs> you know, sometimes the thing is that we, we are looking for God to give us, like, divine missions. We are waiting for, you know what, when God tells me to do this big thing, I will show myself faithful, I will show my obedience, and then I will do it. But we forget that there are so many things that God has asked us to do in his word. And yet we are not faithful, even with that little thing. It's so easy to be to be stuck on the fact that me, God, has not any divine mission. Like, I don't feel like God has given me, like, any big divine mission. But we forget that God speaks to us through his word every day. And there are things that are written in his word that yet you and I, or I and you, supposed to be you and I, you and I are not doing, are not being faithful on, are not being obedient on. So instead of waiting for that big challenge, my that big challenge or that big my, that big mission, my challenge to myself and to you is that we would recognize God's word as you know God's word. I mean the Bible. By the way, that's what I mean when I say God's word. That we would recognize God's word, their Bible, as God speaking to us, and that we would be quick to hear it. We will be quick to receive it. We will be quick to be doers of the word. That we would be those people that start to s practice small acts of, of obedience as we wait for our divine missions. That's, that's my challenge for you. That's my challenge for myself. That we would recognize God's word and the Bible as 
as God speaking to us and not to sit and wait for ile siku God akaniambia nitoke hapa niende US nika preach nita in the US nika preach or the day that God asks me to move from here and go to I don't know to Uganda and be a missionary I will do it but God is asking you to do small things every day God is speaking to us every day on his word in his word and yet we are not being faithful on that so my challenge to myself and to you to myself and to you is that we would recognize God's word as the Bible as God speaking to us and that we would practice small acts of obedience by doing the things that God has said in his word. So that's it for today. Uh, till next time, let's not be Jonas. <laughs> let's be counted in those people as one of those people who receive God's word, who do it and become, you know, like a, a fruitful because we're actually obeying God's word. We're doing, we're obeying God's word, even in small things, you're not just sitting and waiting for bigger things that God will ask us to do, but we are showing obedience even in the smallest things. We are showing obedience and faithfulness even in the smallest thing that God has asked us to do. So thank you so much for listening. Please do comment down below. I seem to be doing that. Comment down below. <laughs> Give, give feedback, um, you know, share this to as many people as you can that you have, you know, like you have, uh, that are within your reach. Share this to as many people as are within your reach. Um, give me feedback, say a few things here and there. Just be encouraging, be encouraging, guys. So, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you guys and I love you guys to the core. And this is what Feji Kamore, and this is, has been Reflections by Feji Kamore. Cheers!